statistics and excel deck of cards statistics and excel get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product. Because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can go right to the heart of the practice problem, the blank tab being blank so we can practice formatting the cells in Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's take a look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. So in a prior presentation, we talked about some statistics related to a coin flip, which is a great start, but oftentimes people say, hey, look, that's a little too simplified because you only have two outcomes of a head and a tail. So let's take a look at another example with a deck of cards and we'll practice mapping out the deck of cards, seeing how many cards are in the deck and how they are labeled, and then thinking about how we can assign possibly a number to each card so we can use our Excel tools in order to have a random sample, try to simulate a random selection of a card in a deck of cards, for example, and then analyze the outcome with some of our statistical tools, including making uh, some charts and whatnot from the data that we get. All right, let's go on over to the blank tab and just build this from a blank tab. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up a bit. Uh, we're currently at the 280, or I am at least. I'm going to select the triangle up top, formatting the entire worksheet like we do every time, right-clicking on the cells to format. And then we're going to go down, let's go to the currency, negative numbers bracketed and uh, red. And then I don't need any dollar signs for my particular problem. So I'm going to remove, well, I don't need the dollar sign. I'm going to remove the decimals, which I don't need for my particular problem. So let's remove those as well. So let, let's first just think about the deck of cards. Now, oftentimes when we're trying to use our analytical skills in Excel, we have to kind of do some conversion uh, to numbers so we can do uh, some numerical calculations. So let's think about the cards in a deck of cards first. So, so we'll say, okay, if there's a deck of cards, we know that there's a one through a 10 and then, then there's a jack, queen, and a king and the one is an ace, an ace or a one. So I can say, all right, if I have a deck of cards, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the whole thing again, go to the home tab, font group and bold the whole thing. And then I'm gonna wrap the text on this cell. So I'm gonna go to the home tab, alignment, wrap the text and center it. So I know if I just list out my deck of cards, I've got one, two, three, four, I can select those, I can copy it down to 10, uh, copy it down to 10. And then, and then I've got the Jack, Queen and King, which I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna continue my numbering and copy that down and just label them as uh, 11, 12, 13. Now, again, depending on what you're doing, this is a, a useful tool if you're trying to kind of count the cards, right? So you might try to assign a number to each of the cards, even though three of the cards don't have an actual number 
uh, to them that could be useful for calculations and assigning which card is what, especially when you're in something like Excel. But it doesn't stop there because then we have we have the suits of the card. We've got spades, we've got hearts, we've got diamonds, we've got clubs, and then the total. So if we think about each of these cards, there's for aces or ones, there's one spade, one heart, one diamond, one club. So we have a total number of aces. Sum function equals the sum of these four. So summing up those four, we're just building a little table. And then clearly that's the same all the way down, right? There's one, 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 one number twos of spades hearts, diamonds, clubs, these are not in any particular order. So I'm just making up an order of the suits. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, we sum that up. I can copy these ones all the way down because there's gonna be one of each suit of each card. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that down and then I can copy my totals down. I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and just copy that down. So there we have it. So, so then I can have my totals down here the total on down below is going to be if I if I sum this up equals the sum of these. I'm holding shift and scrolling up. Let's do that again just so you can I can do this. The sum, the trusty sum function, S U M favorite function, shift nine up arrow. I'm doing it just with the keyboard, and then I'm holding down uh, shift with the up arrow, just one at a time because it's it's. I don't need to like jump up there because it's not that far up. Once we have that, then of course we can copy it across, putting my cursor on the fill handle and dragging across. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the end and 52 then is the total number of cards in the deck. So I can sum it up this way or I can sum it up this way, right? Come up to 52 either way. So we've kind of listed out our, our, our deck of cards. Let's go ahead and format this thing. Our typical formatting for the headers is going to be black and white. So I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to go to the fonts and make this black and then white on the text. And then I'll typically make the middle bit blue, the middle bit blue. So we'll make that blue home tab font group dropping it down on the borders let's make the borders first and then i'll go to the blue bucket if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors over here and then blue and the standard blue boom and then the bottom maybe i'll make that uh dark blue home tab font i'll make this dark blue and then the font white just so it can stand out down there let's put some borders around it too borders you got to separate all the cells need to be in their own place just like just like the potatoes and the peas do not mix together on the plate or they will not be eaten all right so then we're gonna we could are gonna make it a little bit thinner too it's a little it's a little wide i'm not trying to be offensive to the cells but they're a little wider than uh than is healthy for them to be okay so all right so there's our so there's just our our our, our numbers now now what if we were if we were to try to look at a deck and we're trying to think about well what if i what's my odds of drawing you know any of these any one card out of the deck so so the let's make a skinny h here so the odds of any card you would think would would be put a colon let's make the eye a little bit larger so we could do a, a calculation of it uh the odds of any card would just simply be the number you know one card out of how many cards there are we know that there are equal to let's say equal to 52 in the deck so the odds of any one card per draw would be equal to one over 52. That would be a little bit of our statistics. That's what we would expect. Now I'm gonna make that a percent. Home tab numbers, let's percentify that. 
Let's add some decimals. So there we have that. So, so we could say, okay, what are the odds of a, any suit? Is that how you spell suit for cards? I think that's like a, a, a business suit. I think they're the same though. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. So there's only four, there's an even amount of each suit. So there's 13 cards of each suit. So then we could say, so cards per suit are equal to, I'll just point to this 13 down here, out of total cards. So let's just call this one card out of cards in deck. And then I can copy that here. I'll say this equals cards in deck and this equals 52. So I know I'm doing this fast, but we've, we've done this a little bit in the past. So I'm gonna say, all right, there's our calculation. Let's go to the home tab, font group, underline that. And so this is the odds of any suit. This is equal to up to 13 divided by up arrow 152. I'm then going to make this cell a percent by going to the home tab, number group, percentifying it. That's not a real word, but I like using it. Some people, it upsets them but you get 25%. I think it's fun. I think it's, I think it's a, a, a term that should be introduced to the dictionary and I should get credit for uh, advancing humankind's understanding through language. Uh, but in any case, then I'm also going to indent this home tab uh, alignment indent and then I'll select these. So notice this is a nice way that we can go home tab alignment indent Oftentimes when I have the subtotal, you put a colon at the end of it to show the indentation. And sometimes you might even, I'm gonna make this a little wider, double indent the answer, right? Alignment indent. So now you've got, you know, this nice little formatting. I'll underline this one too, that shows, shows everything we need there. So that's the odds of any suit. And then I could take, uh, I, I could take the odds, odds of, uh, any number, any suit, so any one number, any one number in any suit. In other words, I could get an ace in either spades, hearts, clubs, uh, diamonds, or clubs, right? So any, I can get, I, I have f four out of, out of uh, 52 chances every time I draw a card to draw a ace, a two, a three, a four, and so on. So we can once again say uh, number of card cards of each number are equal to four, right? And I can say then compare compare that to the cards in the deck equals fifty two. Let's put an underline here, home tab, font group, underline, and do our odds. I'll just say odds equals four over 52. We'll make that a percent, home tab, numbers, percentifying it, add a couple decimals. So about 7.69. Note that Excel actually, even though I'm rounding it here, remember that Excel doesn't actually round it if I was to use this number in another calculation. In other words, if I said, I wanna take this cell times 100, it's not really multiplying it times 100 times 7.692, but rather it's multiplying by the full decimal. It's only, that it's only rounding to the point that you can see. That's really important, otherwise you'll get a little bit confused. Like if I just took seven times 100, uh, or, or now it's eight times a hundred and I get eight, but I add some decimals. It's like, wait a sec, something went wrong here. It should be eight and it's 7.69. That's because it's multiplying by the whole number here, even though you can only see, uh, see how many decimals that you are showing. All right, let's indent these the same way. Home tab, uh, alignment indent. I'll indent this one. Home tab, alignment indent. I'll make these blue and bordered as is our tradition. So I'm going to select the first cells, home tab, font group, border it. 
and then bucket add in the blue same here i'm going to say border blue and then this one let's make this border uh blue the blue and border okay so so now we're, we're going to say okay well how can i simulate that in excel i'd like to run an experiment where i basically can mimic uh pulling a card from the deck but I can't really do it because all of because I don't have an individual value for each of these cards unless I call it, you know, one of spades or something. I would like an individual numerical value for each card. Well, okay. So now let's let's try to assign each card a numerical value. So I'm gonna then make k small. I'll make a skinny k, and say, all right, here's our issue. Here's the here's the. Uh, the assigned number i'll say assigned number and notice i'm i'm over the cells but i'm not going to worry about it because i can type over it here i'm going to say this is the card number and this is the suit okay so I'm, what i'm going to do is center these and format them selecting the top three home tab font group uh let's actually go to the alignment first and wrap the text center them i'm going to make them a header but by going to the fonts group bucket black and white all right now the the card numbers that i have i've got one two and so on selecting those cards and copying down until i get to 13. so i've got 13 cards and they're of the suit. Let's just pick this suit. I'm going to say equals because that's the easy thing to do because I'll just pull the suit from over here equals C1. So I just pulled it over equals C1 instead of typing it again. And on the second one, I'm going to say this equals the one above it. That's a useful little formula because then I can, I can select this cell and copy it down. The other method you could use is to make an absolute reference. But notice I can copy that down. So I've got one through 13 spades, these last three representing the Jack, Queen, King. And then I've got, starting over again, one, two. I'm gonna select those two cards, copy them down to 13. And these are gonna be the next suit. I'm gonna say equals to pull that suit over, left arrow, scrolling up to the top. I wanna pick up the hearts. That's the next one I had in line, all right, hearts. And then in the cell below it, I'm going to say equals up arrow, the hearts above it, and then simply put my cursor on that cell, fill handle, drag it down, dragging it down. So then we have one, two, again, to 13, selecting those two so I can do the auto fill, bringing it on down to 13. And these are gonna be equal to in N25. I'm gonna say equals instead of typing it in, less likely to misspell it multiple times. I'll just pull in the one misspelled one, diamonds, diamonds. And then we're gonna say this equals the one above it and copy that down. And then we'll do this one more time, of course, for the last suit. And we just put these suits in random order. This, you could put them in any order you want. This but this is the order we're gonna choose. Once they're in order, then you gotta to stick to it. So the last one is the clubs. So I'm gonna say equals, why you gotta put the clubs last, huh? 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 I don't know, I just, there's no reason. I just randomly put them in. <laughs> clubs, you gotta put the clubs on the bottom? Is that what, okay, I just, here we go. So here, and then I'm just gonna assign a number. So now I'm gonna assign them a number from one to 52. Instead of saying they're gonna be from one to 13 and then assign each suit, I'm just gonna say the number we're gonna give them is just gonna be one, two, grabbing those two and fill handle them down to uh, 52 cards. So there it is, boom. All right, so, then, so now I've just assigned these out. So you can see down here, like this 11 or, or if I go into the diamonds, this five of diamonds is being represented by a 31 in our, in our numbering scheme. 
so that I can then set up a random selection between 1 and 52, each number representing a separate card. So let's put a table around this. I'm going to just put a table around it by going to the Insert tab, Tables, and then we'll just add a table around it and say, uh, OK. So then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make these two cells skinnier again. I didn't mean to widen the cells out like that with the table. All right. So now, we, so to simulate a draw of a card, if it was an even deck that has all 52 cards in it, you, you don't have the, the card shark with an ace up their sleeve that they snuck in to the deck, then you would expect uh, that we could, we could just do a random draw between 1 and 52 to simulate a random draw of the card. So I can then, let's make a skinny zero here, a skinny zero column. And then I'm just going to say this is a random draw of a, of a fair deck that we're trying to simulate. So I'm going to go then to the home tab, uh, font group, make this black, white, alignment group, wrapping it, and then alignment group, centering it. So I'm going to use my random number generator again. I'm going to say rand between, and I want to take it between 1, 52. So we're just going to get a random number between 1 and 52, enter, there we have it. Now, the question is, well, how far down do we want to go? Now, we have, we're in Excel here, so we can do this for quite some time. So let's, let's imagine that we did this a whole lot of times. So let's take it down to like thousands of, of draws just for the fun of it. So we're going to go into like, I'm going to drag it down to, let's say, like 3,000. I, I'm sorry, let's, let's say, let's keep it down here. Oh, I went to five, 5,000. That seems a little much. Let's just, we'll, we'll keep it at 5,000 instead of 5,002. I'll see if I can go up to just 5,000, 5,001, because I think we started on cell number two. So a whole lot of random drawing happening here. So I'm going to go back up. And so that would obviously take a lot of time in real life, but our, our generator can do that. And so then I can go into the insert tab and let's put just a table around it and it'll grab the whole table all the way down to cell 5001 and then okay. So now we've got a random generator. So we've got a random generator and if I double click on it, it should reshuffle or I can like resort it and it'll reshuffle as I uh, resort it. So now let's just mimic one one of those random samples of you know the 5,000 draws that we, t we drew one card at a time. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to right click and copy. And I'm going to put it in column R but paste it just one, two, three. So it just grabs those numbers and solidifies them to just one number. Let's go ahead and uh, put a table around this one. Insert and then uh, tables and insert a table. So here's our result of the first random draw. And I'm gonna make this home tab alignment wrap center. And there we there we go. So now we could sort that. Uh, we could sort this, you know, A to Z or Z to A if we so choose. And we can see all the ones, all the twos and whatnot. But there's a lot of draws there so we could then uh, we could then try to come up with a a table showing how many times each of those cards were drawn and see if that kind of lines up to what we would expect and how far off we are and so on. Let's make a skinny Q column. To do that, I'm going to make a skinny S column. And so let's say that we have our, our table again with our assigned number. Let, let's start off by just copying the table we did over here, right? Let's copy the table we did over here where we had th these three, our assigned number. Let's copy this stuff from L to N. I'm just going to copy the whole column and we'll bring that on over here and I'll paste it in column T, pasting it. The suits got messed up because I used a formula to get the suits. So let's just say the suits... Let's just type it in here. This is going to be spades. Uh, well, let, let's do this. Let's hard code the suits. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy this whole thing. And instead of pasting a formula, 
I'm going to right click and paste it one, two, three. So now the suits are hard coded and there's no formula in there. Okay, so there we have that. And then I'm going to say the so these are our our results results from the 5001 or 5000 draws that we had. So let's do a count of the results. So now I'd like to do a count uh, function. And I'd like to say I want you to count it if it's a number one. So however many times a number one shows up here, that's what I want the result to be the number one standing for the ace of spades. So I'm going to use our trusty count formula count if brackets. And then I'm going to say the range is the first criteria selecting the entire range. So that should pick up the entire range of the table, comma, and then the criteria is this number one, not the card number, because that repeats. I want the number that we assigned that has an individual a number per card. So it picked up and notice it copied the reference all the way down for us because we're in a table. So that's great. That's what we want it to do. And so there, there's our results. So we've got it has 79 ones, 100 uh, of, of, of the twos uh, of spade, spades, right? And then the count of 28, which represents a two of diamonds, 90 of those and so on so if i then i can add to the bottom of the table a total right we'd like to have a total down here so let's go up top and, and to do that with a table i can go to the table design i can go to the table style options and let's add a total column so there's our total and then when it counts this up it comes out to five thousand. and that's correct because that's how many times that's how many how many uh of these we we did how many times we drew one particular card out of the deck of 52 5,000 times all right so now we can get a percent a percent of total so so how often is that from a percentage basis common calculation when we're doing our statistics it's going to be equal to 79 divided by the total which is 5,000 enter it copies it down i can't see anything because the cells are not in the format of a percent so i'll select the whole thing uh home tab numbers percentifying it i can add a couple decimals to it and then if i scroll down we can see that uh, it should sum up i'll choose my table options to sum it it should come out to you know 100% number group percent 100%. So there so there we have it. So now now when we when we looked at the actual here we said the actual outcome should be around uh 1.92 per card. So you could see let's let's put that here. Let's say actual should be equal to we'll we'll pull in our number here. 1.92 or 1 out of 52 and so i'm going to make that absolute by selecting f4 on the keyboard and then it copies it down so it's the same cell reference all the way down because i put a dollar sign bef bef before the j and the and the four selecting the entire column home tab number group percentifying it so let's add some decimals number group couple decimals and then I can look at the difference difference and we could say okay this is going to be equal to this cell minus this cell again because it's in a table it'll copy it all the way down let's add some decimals selecting the entire thing and then home tab number group decimalizing it and adding uh, or percentifying it, adding a couple decimals. So there we have there we have our change. So so it's pretty close on on uh, on each of the cards that we're that we're drawing out, right? So this is each of the cards, each one of them we would expect to be because it, they're all representing you know one out of fifty two chance if it was an even deck. So you can also think about it this way. If you drew one card uh, 5,000 times, 
How many times would you expect to draw any one card, like an ace of spades, for example? It would be equal to the 5,000 draws times the actual 1.29 about, or in other words, equals the 5,000 draws uh, times 1 over 52. So, right, you, that's what the expectation would kind of be. Okay, so then, so so let's, if we wait, we could make a graphical representation of this. I'll do this fairly quickly because we're running long on the time here. So we could take our results. Let's just take our results over here. And we're going to select the whole thing, not taking the total into account, and then saying insert and charts histogram, making a histogram. So if I select this bottom amount, I could go to my my bin size and say I would just like the bin size to be like one. So I try to say like 0.99. And so now you've got each number. You might say, okay, what if I make a bar chart that will list just one to 52 and then give me, and then give me the results in a bar chart. So to do that, I could select, I'm gonna select the two columns. I want this column on the left. So I want the one to 52 on the X axis and then scrolling back up, I'm holding down control to select the result column. And that's what I would like on, uh, on the Y. And so I'm gonna scroll down to there and then I'm gonna place it where I wanna be before I insert it this time. And then insert charts and the bar graph this time. So now we have a bar graph. Now it's not doing exactly what I want. You say, what is it doing? So we can then, I'm gonna get rid of the title and I'm going to look at the data. So chart design, let's look at the data. So what did it do? It, it put both of them over here on the Y. So what I'm going to say is I really want over here on this side, I just want the second series of data, uh, the results. So I think I removed the first series of data and it has just the second one. And then over here, I want it to go from 1 to 52. I think it's doing that. So I'm going to say, okay, that's good. So I'm going to say, okay. So now I've got my chart down here, one to 51. That's interesting. It didn't go quite to 52. Let's take a look at this second. Actually, let's go back up to my data. And then I'm going to edit this side and say, let's pick up this side should be picking up this series of numbers over here. One to 52 and okay and then okay so now it doesn't show me the end of it it still stops at 50 but there we have it and it's still stopping at 51 poor k so it looks like it's actually skipping every other number one three five so let's go into here and I, i'm going to say in here at category numbers and then under the labels down here, I want to have it specific interval unit instead of automatic of one. So now it kind of crowds them in because it put them all together. So this would be a really long kind of graph. I can pull it to the right so I can see all the numbers spaced out uh, well enough to appreciate the graph. So I'll make this a little wider, holding control, scrolling down a bit. So there we've got our super wide uh, graph and I could put my data labels in here. I could go into, let's just click anywhere in here and go to my chart designs and we could go to the chart elements and add data labels. We'll put it like there it is in the center. Uh, let's put them kind of up towards the top. And now I'm going to remove this series two. I don't need the legend. And so, so there we have it. I, and I could kind of mirror these two. Uh, making them somewhat the same length. So you can see basically, you know, if, if we drew these out infinite one card an infinite number of times, you would expect then the value to be, let's do that value again down here. If I, well, you would expect it to have an even odds, meaning it comes up 1.92% uh, of the times, which in this case, if I drew it 5,000 times, uh, times the 1.92, uh, 
would be 96. So it, this would be kind of like the expected expected value or the estimated value for any one of them. So I'll put some brackets around there. And so you can kind of get an idea of where these are hovering around. Now, if this wasn't an even drawn, this should represent an even draw, then we can we can think about a system next time we'll talk more about, well, what if it's not an even deck? What if we're missing a card or there's multiple other cards in it? And then we can kind of see what would happen if we were to map it out in this kind of fashion. So we'll dive more into that in future presentations.